We welcome you to join the bouquet of programs offered by the School of Humanities, the Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. The Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi, is a mega university today. It was created by an act of parliament in 1985. It is the world's largest university with an enrollment of about 3.5 million current students and 3.2 million alumni. IGNU has also been accorded the highest grade of academic ex excellence, A++, by the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, or the NAC. Now, during your time at IGNU as a learner, we will help you complete your program of study with world-class printed materials, audio and video programs. We have more than 35,000 academic counsellors who will guide you till you complete your program of study. We also provide live interaction with your teachers at the headquarters via teleconferencing mode and live interactive radio counselling besides this, supported by regular TV and radio broadcasts. The School of Humanities was created in 1988 and we welcome you warmly to join any of our programs of study. IGNO degrees, diplomas and certificates are recognized not only in the country but are also very well received across the globe. We look forward to your journey with us and we welcome you once again. <laughs> The School of Humanities of the Indira Gandhi National Open University offers more than 26 ODL programs, which is open and distance learning programs, and now more than 10 uh, online programs. A very interesting feature that we have, a very interesting program that we have on offer right now is the BA English Honours. Now, in this particular program, what we've done is we've taken a large number of uh, courses from English, which means is English as a discipline, and then we have also uh, put in other interdisciplinary and skill-based elective courses. So all of them combine to give you the BA English Honours, which gives students the exposure to subjects which is related to English literature as well as other disciplines. And it will introduce you to various aspects of literature through the core, the discipline-centric, the ability, as well as the skill enhancement and genreic courses. Now, it also exposes learners to the importance of interdisciplinary study, which is in keeping with the National Education Policy 2020. And how do we do this? Because we enable learners to opt for courses which are outside their discipline, not just from English. Now, the eligibility for this program, the BA English Honours, is you need to have a 10 plus 2 grade. And for those students who do not have five subjects, five core subjects, right, especially if they have a SUPW course as the fifth subject, they need to pursue one senior secondary level course from the National Institute. Hello learners. Hello learners. Welcome you all in today's uh, session. The topic of today's session is binary tree. It's an introduction, creation, and traversal techniques. So this topic is covered under the program BCA as well as BCA OL and also to the PGDCA students. So the objective of today's session is basically after going through this lecture, we will be able to cover, able to learn the different properties of a tree and also of binary tree. We will also be able to learn how to implement the binary tree using linked list and thereafter we will discuss 
binary tree traversal techniques what are the methods which can be used for traversing the binary tree so as we know that tree data structure is a non linear data structure so data structure as are of two types linear data structure and non linear data structures so in linear data structures we study uh, arrays we study linked list stack queue and under non linear data structure we studied tree and graph so what is tree basically if we see the tree tree consist of nodes which are connected by edges so in tree there are two components one is edge and another is nodes so nodes contains the data and these nodes are connected among themselves through edges in basically these nodes are of two types one is that of uh, external node and another is of internal node so external nodes which are also known as leaves and internal nodes are basically the uh, consist of two things one is the root node and others are intermediary nodes so how we differentiate which one is root node and which one is intermediary node so this tree data structure uh, represents child parent relationship so the node which do not have parent is known as root node and the nodes which have parents they are the intermediary nodes and the nodes which do not have any child those are known as leaf nodes so if we see the labeling of a tree so if root is considered to be at level 1 some books suggest that uh, root is considered at level 0 but uh, no issue accordingly the next level starts so if we consider the root as level 1 the child nodes of roots are at level 2 and the child nodes of nodes at level 2 are at level 3 and so on that is how the leveling will be done another property of tree is that the depth of tree depth is also known as height of tree so depth of a tree is equal to the number of levels in it if the level is say there are two levels then depth is 2 if there are three levels then the depth or height of the tree is 3 and the branching factor defines how many maximum number of children may be there to a particular node for example if a node has branch factor of 2 then it means it is a binary tree it means that a particular node may have maximum two children if it have more than two children a particular node have may have more than two children then it may it is known as m way tree so today's discussion is around binary tree so breadth defines basically the node of a at a level so if we consider the root then its breadth is breadth breadth is 1 because it may consi consist maximum one node if we see the level 2 then it may have maximum two children in case of binary tree and similarly next level may have maximum four children and so on so breadth define the number of nodes at a level in fact so depth depth of a node say m in a tree is the length of the path from the root of the tree to the m so depth or height of a particular node is always measured from root node root till that particular node so as i told that a node in a binary tree has at most two children that is why it is called binary tree binary means two so let us see what are the properties of a binary tree so if a binary tree contains n nodes then it contains exactly n minus 1 edges for example in a binary tree there are 10 nodes then maximum or the number of uh, branches or edges will be 9 so if it have 15 nodes then the branches or edges will be 14 similarly 
a binary tree of height h has 2 to power h minus 1 nodes or less. For example, if h is 3, so the maximum number of possible nodes will be 2 to power 3 minus 1 that is 7. So maximum number of nodes will be 2 to power h minus 1 or lesser than that. So we, if we have a binary tree which contains n number of nodes, then the height of the tree is at most n. At most n, when it will be at most n? When it is completely skewed tree, either left skewed tree or right skewed tree. And at least the height will be ceiling value of log n plus 1 at base 2 where n is the number of nodes. Similarly, if a binary T has n nodes at a level L, then it has at most 2 n nodes at a level L plus 1, that is at next level. For example, at root level, we have only single node. But at next level, that is a level 2, we may have 2 nodes. Similarly, at next level, we will be having 4. And at next level, we will be having 8 and so on. So this is relationship between the uh, level and the number of children. So in total, number of nodes in a binary t with respect to depth d is can be given as 2 to power d plus 1 minus 1. For example, if the value of d is say 1, so it will be three number of nodes will be there. If the D is 0, then it will be one number of nodes. If D is 4, then it will be D to power 4 plus 1, that is six, uh, 16 minus 1, 15 number of nodes. Then some th there are some other properties of binary tree, like full binary tree. So a binary tree of height H, which had 2 to power h minus 1 element that binary tree is called a full binary tree. Means in full binary tree at every level there are maximum number of possible nodes. So in that case is known as full binary tree. Another property of binary tree is complete binary tree. So a complete binary tree is whereby if the height is d and all levels except possibly level d are completely full. So it means that in complete binary tree all the level except the last one is completely full. Last level may have lesser number of maximum number of possible nodes. And all the nodes at the last level should be left aligned. It means that they should be as left as possible. So that is complete binary tree. Now I come to the next point about binary tree implementation. So here we will discuss about the linked list based implementation. So in the linked list, as we know, binary tree consists of nodes. So first of all, we are required to define the structure of the node. So the simplest structure, because in binary t, there uh, each uh, uh, a particular node may have maximum two number of children. That is left known as left child and right child. So there should be two pointer fields in the node. One pointer field should address to the left child. Another pointer field should address to the right child, or we can say to the right subtree. And at least one data part should be there. For example, the implementation which we are discussing here, it contains some integer data. So for that, we have defined int data. So the structure of node is defined in the top four lines of code. That is a struct node and within curly brace, we write int data and two pointer variables of struct node type left and right. And thereafter, we call the main function in the program where we define the root. So root is of 
pointed to struct node so that's why its data type is struct node star root and we initialize in beginning root pointing to zero that is it do not contains any uh, value so thereafter we call the binary tree creation function so that is for that we have we use root is equal to create so here this create function will return the address of the node which is created and that is going to be stored into the root so let us see the definition of create how it can be implemented so here the right side of this slide you can see the complete definition of create so this create function is implemented using recursion so i hope all of you might be aware about the recursion how uh, base condition are been defined and how recursive calling is been done in case of recursion so first of all we can see that this create function is going to return its return type is struct node star it means it is going to return a pointer which is of the type struct node and that is going to be stored into the root because in main function we see root is equal to create so whatever pointer address is been returned by the create function it is stored to be to to into the root and thereafter we define the integer an uh, integer variable say x and this integer variable is used to uh, to take input data input we can say and then we define a another variable say no new node and its data type is again struct node star that is new node is pointed to struct node and we know that in c programming we have malloc and calloc functions through which we can assign the memory dynamically so next line is showing that particular thing that is here the memory is been created dynamically so new node is equal to struct node star malloc and then size of struct node so this amount of memory size of struct node means this amount of memory will be created and its address will be there into the new node and then we take the input from the user so when we do not we want to st stop that is in case of recursive function uh, we want to give the base condition where the calling of recursive function will stop so we can input minus 1 so if we input minus 1 then there will be no node creation otherwise it will keep on creating the nodes so we take the input through this kind of function if x is equal to minus 1 if input is minus 1 then it will return zero value otherwise in the new, uh, new nodes data part that x will be stored and thereafter we call the left child left pointer field and right pointer field through recursive calling so we give the message enter left child if we want to create left child then we can give some non zero input value to x otherwise if we do not create want to create for, uh, any left child further then we can give minus 1 and similar is the case with uh, right child as well so if we want to create right child then we will call the the create function with the sen uh, sentence new node arrow operator right is equal to create and once it is because it is recursive function so there will be internal stack maintains which will store all these uh, uh, statements and they will be popped in uh, last in first out fashion and finally it will return the new node and that which will be stored to the root so this is how we can implement binary tree now i come to another point another thing about binary tree how we can traverse the binary tree how we can uh, read the 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 content of binary tree so there are three methods in fact pre order traversal is there in order traversal is there and post order traversal is there so let us come to the pre order traversal so the basic steps which are been covered in pre order are that first we print or visit the root node then we traverse the left subtree in 
pre-order form and thereafter we traverse the right subtree in pre-order form. So these are three uh, steps for pre-order traversal. So let me take one example, it will be more clear. Like here in this slide you can see there is a binary tree and the root of this binary tree is A and left child of A is B and right child is W. So first of all in pre-order traversal A will be printed and thereafter we go to the left subtree and B will be uh, printed and thereafter again we go to the left subtree of B so X will be printed and then left subtree again of X that is E will be printed. So there is no further left subtree so we will come to the right subtree so we will print M that is the right child of X and thereafter all three nodes X, E, M are printed so we will go to the one step up, 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 up and we will print the right child of B and thereafter all the entire after traversing the, all the entire left subtree we will go to the right subtree of A root. So we will print W and thereafter again in the same fashion that is left subtree so T will be printed then P will be printed and then N will be printed and finally to the right subtree of W so C will be printed and H will be printed. So in this case pre-order traversal the sequence of traversal will be A, B, X, E, M, S, W then uh, T, P, N and followed by C and H. The next method of binary traversal is in order traversal. So in the in order traversal first of all we traverse the left subtree in in order form. Thereafter we visit or print the root node and finally we traverse the right subtree in in order fashion. So let me see one example for this in order traversal. So here in this same binary tree we ha I have taken so we can say that A is there so first of all uh, A will not be traversed or visited or printed until unless all the nodes toward its left subtree are printed. So it will come to the B and again B will not be printed until all the nodes toward its left subtree are printed. So it will come to the X and same way X will not be printed till all its node toward its left will be printed. So first node which is going to be printed in in order traversal is E and thereafter root that is X the root for this E is X so E followed by X then right subtree that is M and thereafter we will go one level up so that B will be printed and then S and then one level up A will be printed and then we will come to the right subtree so when we come to the right subtree W will not be printed because there are nodes into the left subtree. So it will come to the T then P. So first in right subtree P will be printed followed by T then N then W then H and followed by C. So the sequence of uh, node traversal using in order technique will be first E then X then M then B S A P T N W H and C. This is how in order traversal works and finally the post order traversal. So the steps for post order traversal are basically traverse the left subtree in post order fashion. So traverse first all the left subtree nodes then traverse all right subtree nodes in post order fashion and then you print or visit the node. So let me take example the same example for post order traversal so we can see that here A is the root then first left subtree will be traversed in pre order fashion we will go to the left subtree that is B then again left X then E so E there is no left subtree or left child as well as also not any right subtree or right child so E will be printed here thereafter right subtree will be printed so right subtree of X is M so there is only one child X so X uh, sorry M will be printed and thereafter the root will be printed that is X. So once the all three nodes toward left subtree of B are printed then we will move toward the right subtree. So we can see that 
the right subtree of B contains F. So F will be printed and thereafter B will be printed and then we go one level up and reach to the root node that is A. So here A will not be printed. It will go to the right subtree that is W again left subtree T and it will finally go to the P. So P will be printed followed by N then T then W uh, sorry not W H then C and then W and finally the root will be printed A. So the post order traversal uh, for this particular binary tree the sequence will be E, M, X, S, B, P, N, T, H, C, W and finally A. So this, this is how we can apply the post order traversal. So uh, that's all about uh, binary tree its creation and its uh, traversal. So in today's lecture basically we discussed how to create binary tree using linked list, how to perform the tree, uh, binary tree traversal using pre-order traversal, in-order traversal and post-order traversal. Thank you. Thank you very much.